We're approaching a shady road with a three-way split. Portable laptop monitors. Off to your left, you have generic, brandless, nameless, probably gonna disappear in a couple weeks listings on Amazon that are from the same manufacturer. Branded 60 times over with inflated bot reviews, with paper mache-like build quality ready to disintegrate in your hand. To the right, Asus has a line of laptops with a built-in second display, which has its own setbacks or limitations, but overall is a pretty good option. Then straight ahead, if you don't veer course, you have the infamous Indiegogo or Kickstarter crowdfunded project, which can be like trying to find buried treasure or a needle in the haystack, but in this case, it happens to be the lesser of all three evils. Let's get it. A quick disclaimer for my audience, the Stallions and Stallionettes, this monitor was sent for review, but this is going to be an honest, comprehensive review. I haven't been paid or told to say anything about it, so if there's any cons, shortcomings, or areas of improvement, you're going to hear about it. So these companies make better products over time. Let's go over some of the key features, because I want to explain the limitations of this display, what I would personally use it for, and what I would not use it for. I do think this is a beast when it comes to productivity, as Amazon is littered with a ton of similar monitors that are either double the price, offering similar or identical features, or this is... Uh, absolutely the worst. You get these cheap generic clones and whatnot that most of them are produced by the same manufacturer using the exact same displays, the same ABS plastic housing or bezels, if you will, and then get rebranded under maybe 60 different names. But luckily in my uses, this monitor met all of my needs. Actually, I would say exceeded my expectations for the price point. I hate to have to caveat that compliment by saying for the price point, but I'm not comparing this to a $1,300 4K Samsung ultra wide monitor or anything. This isn't a gaming display. That's one of the limitations we'll get to in a little bit. It's going to be frame rate and also just general gaming performance, but you're probably not purchasing this for any type of gaming other than maybe a secondary monitor for a map or to look at chat if you're streaming or something like that. This company does have a website, which is good because a lot of time these Kickstarter projects, if it's their first product that they're developing, they haven't had a time to actually make a website in WordPress or whatever. This website might not be the sexiest, but it is easy to navigate as you have these drop downs at the top and you can purchase directly from this website, which I like. Now, if you click on this, click here to back us, it is going to take you to that Kickstarter campaign for the monitor that we are reviewing today. Also, if you Google the company's name, Electro, or the monitor name, Crowview, the first results you're going to get as of now is that Kickstarter campaign because that's what they're really pushing for. I really like the fact that they don't have gaming listed on here. They have entertainment, which would, yes, you can absolutely watch media videos, YouTube and whatnot. But as far as playing games on here, I'm going to say no to it. This is a very simple product. You can see exactly what it does, so I don't need to describe it to you. It snaps onto the back of your monitor so you can swivel it out. But let's get down to brass tacks. These are the tech specifications, which I want to talk about. You have a 60 hertz refresh rate, and this is the primary reason that I wouldn't recommend utilizing this monitor for gaming. A 60 hertz is definitely playable, especially if you're on a budget PC that can only hit sub 60 FPS. But generally, I would advise if you do have the secondary monitor that you run your game on your primary monitor as it probably has better performance, and then use the secondary monitor for, like I mentioned, chat or in-game map, if you can even do that. This is a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. It is advertised as having HDR, high dynamic range. No monitor in this price point, especially something this lightweight and aimed at being portable is going to support true native HDR, but they probably meet just the minimum specifications to be able to put that HDR badge on the packaging. Super important note for compatibility, this will only work with diagonal screen sizes of 13 to 16 and a half inches, which are the most common laptop sizes. It'd be cool if this arm could extend a little bit longer up to like 18 inch laptops. Anything bigger than that, if you're getting like a 20 inch laptop, it, you might just want to think about getting a desktop at that point. You will get better performance for sure, like a 4090 low profile card in a laptop is not the same as a 4090 in a desktop. I know this because I own both and I've done benchmarks and I, I will be sharing that information with the internet because it's very interesting. Low power consumption, I can absolutely vouch for that. H how do you know? Well, it's powered off the damn USB port or universal serial bus port off of your laptop. So the fact that it doesn't need external power, yeah, I would say low power consumption. This is listing compatibility for Mac, PC, and the Nintendo Switch. I did review the Orion screen for Switch, which is this massive screen extension expander and uh, it wasn't very practical or usable. How is this Kickstarter campaign performing thus far? Well, 364 backers have pledged $419,000 thus far, which sounds like a big old fat figure, but doing a little bit of conversion here that comes out to 53,000 US dollars. I'd be pretty pissed if YouTube starts paying me in HK, HK Army as a paintball team for the one or two guys that might have gotten that reference. Like, yeah, brother, slinging paint, get your jersey on and sling some paint. Also searching head to toe, tip to tits on their landing page, as well as this Kickstarter campaign. I cannot find 
find anything about the milliseconds of input lag or delay, probably because it's pretty high. Another reason I wouldn't recommend it for gaming. How the hell does Kickstarter work? If you've never ordered anything off of it, this is the second product that I have reviewed that is a Kickstarter campaign. The other one was a mouse from about a year and a half ago, which following up on them, it looks like they are in full production now and they are still selling those units and doing pretty well for themselves. But how Kickstarter works is generally the earlier you order your device, since it is an early or pre-production, if you will, it's not an actual finished product yet, you get a cheaper price. So if you order right now, you're getting 35% off. But if you wait a little bit longer, it goes down to 34 or you can wait till it's sold in Amazon or Walmart or whatever and pay the full price. Which if you click on order now and then click on see options, since you're trying to help out these companies, you can make a contribution. If you believe in their vision, and their product, you actually stand behind it. You, you can back them. You can be an early backer, if you will. Or if you just want the dang product, you can click on get this perk, type in all your credentials here. So if you get the cheapest option or perk, which I recommend you do, it's the cheapest way of getting this monitor in your hand. Currently, you're paying 115 US dollars. Eventually, this is going to go up to a recommended retail, going to be $180. And I'm going to base my review based on that price point. So when it's out of the Kickstarter campaign and it's just sold as a finished finalized product, I think uh, this is a solid monitor at $180 because of that portability factor. If this was just a 60 hertz monitor that stood on your desk, uh, no, that you, there's better options out there. I reviewed a monitor about three years ago that I think I got on sale for 80 something dollars on Amazon and it has slightly better tech specs than this display here. However, it is not portable. How long you got to wait to get this thing in hand if you shovel out the money next month, October. And I want to have a little bit of clean fun with their advertisement over here. This dude just got done with productivity. He's got that little smile, that grin. It's time to molly wop some noobs back to the lobby. It's time for gaming. But some silly McLaughter I want to have with my audience over here. Obviously, this gentleman's not really gaming because you can see he's covering the left thumbstick, not the right, which is for aiming, but he's not walking, just aiming. Good shot there, El Capitan. Also looks like he's playing a mobile game and also it's on a switch. So maybe he's playing Apex Legend at 720p low settings, stuttering at 20 frames per second. Who knows? I, I play all my FPSs on Switch. It's the best platform for it. But in all reality, this is the type of gaming that I would recommend. This looks like maybe COD Mobile. That's actually exactly what it looks like. Yeah, mobile games on this display would be fantastic. But you're trying to play some AAA modern titles on this? Most likely not. Also, I really like this little stand over here, whatever this thing is. Let us get a bird's eye view on the Electro Crow view. That was intentional. A lot of bird words. Now, the diagonal screen size is 14 inches. However, this is going to be compatible with monitors 13 to 16 inches, which is good because we have a 14 inch MacBook and a 16 inch Windows PC, which are luckily both compatible. And this is powered directly off the USB ports. As this is a Kickstarter project and this product isn't in final development, I'm unsure if the packaging is going to change. However, I'm going to treat it as if this is the actual final packaging because it looks like standard consumer electronic packaging. Some of the key features on the front, one wafer sticker that will need slice lifting up. You will have your documentation top dead center as well as a foam cover. And your very light monitor is going to be held in this plastic sneeze guard. Love to see that. Individual cutouts for all of your cables. You also have a little Velcro tie back for cable management. And your included power brick, which is fantastic that this is indeed included because a lot of electronic items are no longer including bricks. They're just assuming that you have one, which you probably do, but it's always just good to have one with the product. This is going to be a three foot rubber HDMI to mini HDMI. Same story, but USB C to C. And your three foot A to C jumper. This instruction manual or pamphlet from this relatively small crowdfunded project is better than 80% of the massive companies that I review products for. Well, not for them, but my honest reviews of those products. This is in the top 20th percentile of its class when it comes to instruction manuals. English is the primary language, huge font, so even if your eyes are blown out, you don't need to press your nose right up against the parchment. <laughs> color pictures and then what I love to see is on the back you have your tech specs and every single one of these matches up with the technical specifications on their landing page not only on the website but the Kickstarter page as well so that's great there's no discrepancies 4.2 watts of power consumption here but then on the website something else that's been a huge trend or fad here recently is mix matching information between the manufacturer's listing and then Amazon and other third-party vendors the unboxing experience continues to not suck ass and well exceed my expectations as you have this nice little cover with the SKU number little flat matte black branding on there as well. And then you have pieces of medical tape on here that hold the sucker in place. Oh yeah, it peels right off. As for the actual monitor itself, I'm holding it at an angle to not really blare you. It looks like the two sons of Tatooine. I'm gonna hold this monitor at a bit of an angle here to try and not smack you with too much glare. I could just invest in some better soft lighting, but... <laughs> 
rather spend that on controllers. I'm going to show you three pages in this manual that put a smile on my face. First of all, clean, concise breakout of the controls, the actual physical buttons, as well as the ports, plugs, and connectors. Thank you. This feature right here, the fact that you can power this and get display through one 3.1 USB-C cable or using an HDMI device with that AC brick, which is included. That's fantastic. Also, a ton of different mounting methods if you want to go to the left or right. This face-to-face, -face, I'm not really sure why you'd use this. Maybe like a business meeting or something where you're like, hey, I'm going to put it on the back display now. Are you, are you ready, Tim? Tell me what you think of these slides. With this killer contraption and this gamer beast, we actually have two different methods. One cable, which is by far going to be my preferred method, via one of the two USB-C ports. They have to be 3.1 and support power pass-through. But as a perker bonus on the rump or tuchus of this gaming laptop, there's also an HDMI out, which is killer for projecting it onto a TV and basically using this like a glorified console with a controller plugged in via a dongle. This thing's got to get reviewed on the channel because it's super sick. You could use that HDMI out and then the included power brick plugging into this USB port. Oh, this is going to be so sick. This should be the only cable I need. That C to C, just let it be. Do, re, me, skiddly be. Let's just put it in the damn port. It should work. Dr. Seuss, see my face? Yeah, come on over here. I definitely feel like I'm locked into a cockpit of productivity, especially having a mouse, this little wrist rest, nice keyboard, hit this button here, got a numerical pad, dual monitors, this bad boy swivels in, it's not too cluttered because it's only one cable, really not sucking too much additional juice from my laptop. This isn't on there very good, hold on a second. Oh my goodness gracious. This worked for me automatically, plug and play, the right orientation, but if for some reason the mouse cursor is going off the left side in a big infinite loop over to here, or it's not acting nicely with your other monitors, right click on the desktop and go to display settings. Click identify it. It will pop up a number for each monitor. And this is kind of in the middle. So I'm going to bring it down just a skosh, hit apply. Now, bam, as you can see, I can drag and drop windows, full screen them. Yeah, that's, that's nice. Also direct plug and play support for the old MacBook Pro, except the orientation of the monitors was doing the thing where the cursor went the wrong way. <sighs> and it's a little bit more complicated to switch it on Mac over here to the Apple, take a bite out of it, click on system settings, click on displays, click on arrange. And now you're able to adjust the orientation, which you can do on Windows directly from the desktop. The in monitor menu navigation is very easy with those four included buttons. I'm just reaching behind it, hitting the one all the way to the left will open up the menu. And these are the defaults. And to be honest, they're fine. I'm probably going to leave them exactly there. They blend in well with these other three monitors and it looks good, but I'm going to crank that backlight all the way up and see how bright it can go. And then also how dim we can make this monitor. Maybe you're working in bed in a dimly lit room. All right. That is at 100% brightness, 100% brightness. It gets very dark as well while still having a legible image. I can still read all this text in the menu, but moreover than that, we'll just pull an application over here. This is Armory Crate, my motherboard software. Still looks great. Let's brighten her back up. One little gripe or complaint I have with menu navigation is up is to the left and then down for values is to the right, which is so confusing for your brain. Generally up would be over here and down would be over here, you know, but it, it, it's reversed. The plastics actually don't feel super cheap. They don't really feel cheap at all, which is surprising because this is a budget or entry level monitor, at least in the portable segment with the features that it does offer. The bezels are quite a bit larger than I'd like to see, but all of its competitors have the same, really nothing out of the ordinary. The frame rate is only 60 Hertz over here. Excuse him, what? It's off by default, but this is showing FreeSync. Right click on the speaker icon, go to open volume mix. And for the output, we are gonna change that over to, yup, this one over here. There's no built-in speaker with this monitor. That makes sense because that would add weight. And since this is a portable monitor, that's the opposite of what you want. However, I do have this routed to the 3.5 millimeter jack that is built on board. So that gives you another audio output source. And then if you want to prop the crow view up and use it vertically, you can do that like this, or you have this really sweet little kickstand. You might be wondering what this button's for, and that is to adjust height. It does also have a little rubberized pad at the bottom. I like to see that. It does feel a little bit cheap and flimsy, but this is a very, very light display, so this doesn't need to be some hulking piece of metal. Keep that weight down. There you go. Back to your home. That's your home! Are you too good for your home? Also, don't do what I just did folding it this way where the plastic's up against the screen. That's just, just dumb. I mean, common sense would say, why don't you fold it back? 
this way, plastic on plastic. So as for the pros, cons, and verdict, cons, there really aren't a whole hell of a lot of them other than the fact the bezels are pretty large, but that's pretty on par with all of its competitors. And the biggest one in my eyes is the fact that this is a crowdfunded Kickstarter project, which a lot of times don't make it into full production. I have faith that this one will because it's well exceeded its financial goal and also putting hands on the product. It is solid. It is well exceeded my expectations. As for the pros, this monitor gets very, very dim. So if you're in a dark room, it's not going to be disorienting for you. You can still work on it and it gets bright as shit as well. It's the actual scientific term, bright as hell. How many neats is that? Bright as shit. The two biggest pros, I'm going to rattle them off quick, is first of all, is how quick and easy it is to get this thing on and off. You can mount and dismount this sucker from a 13 all the way up to a 16 and a half inch laptop very, very quickly. Love that. And it also didn't feel rickety and shitty and cheap and chintzy in your hand while you were doing it. There wasn't any frame flex to speak of. And the fact that this can pass through power as well as the visual image all off one cable. But if you're going the HDMI route, it does include what you need with the power brick and the additional cable. So all scenarios or situations you want to use this monitor is covered with the included accessories. Speaking of included accessories, that nice little foam pad kept everything all nice and tucked away. I have some news. Despite the fact that this started as a crowdfunded kick me in the Kickstarter project, you can actually now purchase this on their website directly. So that is the link that I will have in the description below, which will be $115 for the next couple of weeks until it reaches that advertised retail of $180. And at that $180 price point, I think this is a solid portable monitor, not only solid in build quality, but solid in what it does. As long as you're not trying to game with that sucker at anything over 60 hertz, a little bit cheaper for the next couple of weeks and then up to $180, which I still think is a good price. In case you're wondering why there's a 3080 just sitting over my shoulder over here, it's actually below shoulder level. It's kind of like at the elbow range here. I have been in boot loop hell with my primary PC Project Zero for the last day or so. Um, I'm not even going to get into it here because I'm just going to rant and rave and this video will never get ended. But my main PC that I built on the channel that's been working like a dream for about a year and a half or so started getting gummed up with Windows updates and whatnot. No compromises, no security alerts or anything like that. But this son of a gun having big fun got caught in this crazy endless boot loop where occasionally it would post into Windows 11, but usually it would not. It would just either boot me into the BIOS or not, not even that. It would just give me that blue screen saying, your PC doesn't know quite what to do. Would you like to restore to a fresh copy of Windows? Which I ended up doing. I didn't lose any of my personal files, my YouTube shit. I'm no rookie cookie. I mean, all that's backed up on external hard drives. Nothing's backed up on the cloud. I keep all my shit local, but oh my golly jeepers. It has just been such a process here, but she's now up and running. She is solid, ready to be the editing rig and workhorse of this channel. I'm the pretty face and the sweet cheese and it's the the workhorse. This monitor's in the description below. Bye. Latest on the Menji. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach in a system as well, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, as well as honest gaming product reviews, keyboards, mice, headsets, controllers, mics, chairs, etc. There are some hefty exclusive discount codes found only in the description of my videos and only for the audience here at Gamer Heaven. I have links to all my other platforms and socials in the description below. To get in touch with myself and the stallion, and stallionettes of gamer heaven join the community discord and check me out at twitch.tv where i go live every other leap year on a blue moon if it falls into an odd calendar number and my ph balance is on point just kidding starting june i'm going to be live streaming a lot thanks for watching this has been ak40 kevin hosting gamer heaven and i'll see you tomorrow because i upload daily all the time 60 percent of the time sometimes most of the time peace